have a couple more tips for you, digital art tips. We have 16 of them actually this time. So, hey guys, one by this by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again, taking a look at some more uh, digital art tips. And I think these videos are, uh, are 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 pretty helpful because a lot of the times you go on YouTube, you don't really see people, you know, usually starting from a sketch. So a lot of the times they already have a sketch, and I like starting from the beginning so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing, what's going on here. So. Um, one of the first ones that I have for you is probably one of the biggest ones. I I love to not rely on the sketch, but I like to have as much detail in the sketch as possible. And a lot of people will tell you don't do a lot of detail in the sketch, don't uh, rely too much on it, and you shouldn't rely on it because you should be able to be flexible and you know go all around and stuff and do whatever you want. But um, I love to have a sketch that I can work off of to make sure that I have a nice base to start from with the line art because usually when I do line art, the line art isn't too complex. So pretty much what I'm saying is don't overcomplicate things, but know when to make sure that you have the right amount of detail, if that makes sense. So try and go, okay, well, I know this is what this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go with this this portion of the sketch like right now I'm doing the kind of collar piece and I know that I want to have some wrinkles and some detail in there but I don't want to overdo it so I keep erasing places I keep going back and doing stuff um, but yeah so that's one of the biggest ones especially when you're starting the sketch the second one you'll see me do a lot especially once I start the line art process is to rotate the canvas constantly I'm always rotating the canvas because if you don't rotate the canvas, you, your hand usually lays in awkward ways. If you bring out a piece of paper and a pencil right now, it'll be the same exact thing. You usually tend to either rotate your hand around the paper or just rotate the paper in general. Um, it's usually the best to get different angles, especially when you're doing specific parts of something. I don't do it too much for the sketch, um, but when I do the line art, the thing is going to rotate around so much, it's, it's insane. Um, so that's a big one. Um, you just saw me actually copy that eye and just duplicate it on the other side. I don't usually like just copying things and duplicating them to the other side, but when it's something like an eye or eyebrows or something like that, I will usually do that, but as you might not have been able to tell actually, what I did was I took the um, move tool and I kind of sheared it on the x-axis, I think it was. I sheared it so that it wasn't exactly the same dimensions as it was. It's a little smushier because it's on the other side of... Uh, it's on the other side of the head. So yeah, that's what I did by the way. Also, um, I don't do it enough during this specific piece that I'm making right now, but a great thing to keep in mind is to always flip the canvas or at least just do it once you've done big enough things. So once you complete the, the, the face, flip the canvas, you know, back and forth, you know, once you complete the actual head shape, you know, flip back and forth. The reason you do this is because you probably heard this before. You probably know this one is because, um, Every single time you do that, it gives your brain a fresh take and a fresh look at it. So if something is off, like if your eye is too big and you didn't notice before, if your eye is too small, you didn't notice before, when you flip it, you'll be able to tell easier because you're not used to seeing it that direction. It's like if you're used to watching your favorite movie and then all of a sudden the entire movie is mirrored and it's like, whoa, something's, something's off here, something's weird um, because you're so used to seeing it the right way around. Um, another thing right here that I'm doing with the mouth uh, in specific, uh, I, I can't get it exactly how I want it, so I just keep erasing parts that I don't like until everything looks the way I want it to look. Now I'm gonna fix it in a second. His lips kind of goes, my lips kind of goes down the top lip, so I kind of erase all that, and I'm like, what? It looks kind of, it looks kind of tight, and I don't really want that right now. I kind of want it to be a bit more loose, so I'm gonna erase the top lip there, and I'm just gonna kind of arc it upwards instead of downwards, and I think that made a huge difference. So it's the small things that make uh, a big difference anytime I'm gonna do that in a second but anyway um, the other tip that I want another one another one of the tips that I have is to actually take breaks frequently because if you take a break um, and then uh, if you take a break from drawing what you're what you're doing is you're giving your brain a time to rest and I know usually when I make things I don't like taking breaks because I just want to get it done and I ha I'm like in a zone if you're in a zone then don't stop but if you're just kind of if you're having a little bit of trouble doing something or you're you're getting frustrated you can't get something to look the way you want it to look take a break for a second take a break just not even just a five minute break just take a break go get something to eat go get something to drink something 
and then come back later on. Um, even just three minutes, like I said, just listen to a song, then come back. Um, and that's my neck. That goes into my next tip. Um, I always listen to music when I draw. Now this is kind of a this is kind of a personal f- preference kind of thing, but not exactly because the when I listen to music when I'm drawing, especially when I when I do anything, I usually like to 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 listen to music. It just depends on what I'm drawing or what I'm doing. For instance, when I I'll write something, um, and when I'm writing, if I'm writing a script or something that has to do with the type of music that I'm listening to, then it'll help a lot. I mentioned this before in a comment uh, a little bit ago, but um, like if I'm writing something that's darker or something like that, then I'll probably listen to like more ambient kind of, you know, music. And then if I'm listening to something, if I'm writing a comedy, then it'll be happy. If I'm listening to music while I'm drawing, it'll help me relax easier so that I'm not just like listening to silence. Because when you draw, you're not going to be really talking. You're not, especially if there's no one else in the room, you're not talking you're not doing anything. It's just completely dead silent. You're focusing. And when you're focusing, it's difficult to not go insane, <laughs> especially for long periods of time. And just listening to music, just put it, just put on like a, like a OST of your favorite video game or your favorite movie or whatever it is. Or just, if you want to, you can, every single time the song stops, just go back to your browser and just hit another song. Um, but anyway, like I'm saying, listening to music definitely helps you stop being as tense when you're drawing and that's a great thing because being tense while you're drawing is not good at all because then it'll come out stiff and not not as good as if you were more loose which is the point of all these tips in the first place um something else that i'm doing right now as you can see is i'm varying my line weights varying your line weights helps uh give more detail and depth into your line art because when you do line art if everything is the same exact width it's gonna have it's not gonna look bad. It just not is good. It's just not gonna look as good as if things were not always the same. When we do videos in Blender, I always talk about how a little bit of random is is better than than completely nothing. When we do things with particles or things like that, I always turn the random size up even just a little bit. I usually max it out, but <laughs> you don't have to do that. Uh, I I usually turn it up just even a little bit because a little bit of random is better than no random at all. So. I really, really, really think that is probably the... If, if, you t- if you take one thing from this video, it's most likely vary your line weights. And like like I said, especially when you have a tablet or something like that, if you don't have a tablet, it's very difficult to, to get a lot of these things. And I know that because I used to have, try and draw with a tablet. So um, it's very, very difficult. But if you do have a tablet, then varying your line weights definitely helps. You can see uh, when, later on when I do the neck, when I draw my neck, it, it, it's very apparent that closer to my jaw and the and closer to the bottom of my neck where it comes out of my shoulders very very more thick rather than the middle of the line and it just makes everything look a little bit better um uh which also brings me to my next point draw in high resolutions this is a big one because if you don't if you don't draw in higher resolutions then when you want to do something with this art later on or even if you don't then everything is not going to look as good it's gonna be more blurry it's gonna be more pixelated it's gonna have more jaggies less anti-aliasing it's gonna it's not gonna be as good if you have you I usually draw in like super big canvases like this canvas I'm drawing on right now is 5,700 pixels by 4,240 <laughs> that's an abnormal size yes but my point is is that just draw in high resolutions it doesn't have to be like hey you know uh, 2560, 1440. It doesn't have to be in an exact dimension or resolution that is a famous one. It doesn't have to be something that everybody uses. It just has to be something that's big enough for you to be able to do something with it later if you want to. So if you want to blow up to be a poster, if you want to put it on your wall, if you want to just have it be large enough just to use as a high quality image in something else, I don't know what you're doing. Either way, you don't want to draw on 300 by 300. <laughs> it's pretty much what I'm saying. Um, but with that, with that being said, you can draw, you can do your sketch as small as you want to do it. Well, not as small. You can't do pixel art, but you get what I mean. If you want to draw your sketch in like 800 by 800, then you can do that because when you draw the sketch, whatever size you feel more comfortable drawing, because I will admit sketching in high resolutions is kind of awkward. I don't know why. It just feels different than if you're sketching in a small portion.